much footage of the carnival processions has been recorded, here we're looking at the floats in 1947 as they pass along Queen Street. I'm Ian McMeekin and I've been connected with Colchester Carnival for many years and in fact for 10 years I was responsible for running the carnival. Carnival is not really a British tradition like it is on the continent and in the tropics but uh, from the mid-1920s Colchester Carnival was a very important part of Colchester's social life. In those days, of course, the carnival was held to support the hospital. Hospitals were supported by voluntary contributions and the Colchester Carnival raised quite substantial sums to support the local hospital. It was very much a community activity. It was held on a Thursday, which people may remember was early closing day in Colchester so the shop people could prepare their floats and not only did the shop people take part in it but of course many of the local uh, factories and industries and other groups uh, scouts and guides young people schools and so on one of the many attractions of course was always Hollington's factory uh, they the girls and the staff from there often dressed up as toy town soldiers. And it was very much uh, part of Colchester's life and activity, a lot of fun and raised a lot of money. Well, of course, when the Second World War came along, that stopped, finished. No carnivals then. No carnivals immediately after the war, though there were certain processions. In 1951, however, we had the Festival of Britain and there was a carnival procession to celebrate that particular event. Colchester's celebration of the Festival of Britain lost money. So a group of people decided to run some activities to liquidate this loss. And they very quickly formed themselves into the Colchester Community Fund. The idea being that any funds raised would uh, support activities within the Colchester community because the funds would be raised locally and Colchester Community Fund uh, came very quickly to be called King Cole's Kitty the kitty for local uh, organisations which would benefit from these activities and the carnival procession grew and grew it was from 1960 uh, held in conjunction with the Colchester Military Tattoo. That was another earlier tradition that had lapsed, obviously, in the war years, but uh, from 1960 in the Lower Castle Park was held a ta military tattoo. And the carnival, uh, certainly in the 1950s uh, into the 60s, was held on a Thursday, still early closing day. I was involved from the uh, mid-50s in various activities, uh, sometimes shaking a bucket, sometimes taking part on some of the floats. And I do remember the very last procession that finished in the Lower Castle Park. This would have been in 1964. Uh, it was very wet. And we had from uh, an organisation I was connected with, called the Young Conservatives. We had a very large entry. We had actually three vehicles, three large vehicles, over 50 people on it, and I was uh, dressed as a ringmaster. I borrowed a, a uh, red coat from a huntmaster, hunting pink, and it was so wet that evening that the dye came through the coat, through my waistcoat, through my shirt, and when I peeled everything off when I got home, my skin was pink all over. Um, I don't know what happened to the coat. Uh, and, and the other reason I remember that is um, I'd actually 
done the entry myself and I'd entered us in the wrong class and we still managed to win second prize so we were rather pleased with that. Um, from uh, about that time uh, an organisation called King Cole's Kittens had become involved uh, organising, uh, first helping and then organising the uh, street collection. Now King Cole's Kittens were originally set up to uh, organise an event at which the Carnival Queen was chosen and they would run a dance and the Queen would be chosen and they would help with the collection and King Cole's Kittens are still going strong raising many thousands of pounds for local charities called King Cole's Kittens because they were as it were a junior uh, wing of King Cole's Kitty, the community fund and the kittens helped with the street collection for a while and in those days the street collection would be uh, put in buckets and then wheeled into the police station overnight and then taken to the banks where they'd be counted and it could sometimes be several weeks before the results came through because uh, the bank staff had to make sure the coins were cleaned and uh, count them in their own time and it was not terribly satisfactory because the public wanted to know immediately how much had been collected. So the kittens undertook the collection and undertook the counting and stored the uh, proceeds overnight, counted them on the Sunday morning and were able to let the press know on the Sunday what had been collected and the money was wheeled into the banks and the banks then had the problem of course of cleaning the, the dirty and wet coins. In 1976 I having been a member of the community fund was asked to take on the organization of the carnival procession and those days we would start at cavalry barracks come in a loop around the town and finish back in cavalry barracks and this was very helpful because the cavalry barracks had very large parade ground there were rooms where people could change hard standing there uh, vehicles could be left and it really was uh, excellent even though we sometimes had difficulty getting vehicles out of the rather narrow gate onto Butt Road. I tried to organise the processions by having a collection of bands as well as visiting carnival queens. Obviously uh, our procession would be headed by one of the bands, either a jazz band or a military band and uh, our own carnival queen and then we'd dot the others through the procession so that we had a, a nice flow and mix in the entries so you didn't get all the entries from one class uh, together. At its peak, that's to say in the mid-1980s, uh, that procession was watched perhaps by as many as 40,000 people. We don't know how many, but it, it was probably that sort of order. Uh, I on one occasion had three military bands taking part as well as many other bands jazz bands the famous big heads from the marine workshops at uh, Harwich and so on uh, visiting carnival queens um, 10 or 12 of those uh, over a hundred entries uh, tremendous amount of fun and that was the thing we, we were putting on a show it was fun for people to a watch to take part in and at the same time we were able to raise two three thousand pounds for local charities and remember I'm going back to the 1970s and 80s when a couple of thousand pounds was worth uh, quite a good deal more than it is now as I said I was responsible for organizing the carnival procession for ten years and then uh, I decided it was time to move on. A few years later there were several changes because uh, with changes up at the garrison the procession had to start on the Abbey Field and snake its way round. Then there were problems with uh, crowd barriers, a, a long-running wrangle over whether the whole route should be covered with barriers and uh, a lack of support. Also of course the tattoo had moved away from the lower castle park to Abbey Fields had become uh, biannual and uh, 
Sadly, the carnival procession is now no longer. Many people in Colchester will remember it with affection. Many people took part in it. Of course, some of the entries were huge, um, particularly when they were entered by uh, companies like Marks and Spencer, um, Woods, the Severals Concert Party, large entries from there, as well as what we used to call, uh, perhaps rather naughtily, the walking wounded. We would have walking entries, we'd have cycle entries, um, junior entries, artistic, humorous. So it was a whole range of uh, types of activity and uh, sometimes there'd be people throwing things to the crowd. Not a good idea because the crowd would then throw things back at them, sometimes money. I do remember somebody threw a penny at me, not to me, at me, and it cut me just above the forehead. Um, and I was dressed as a pirate on that particular occasion and uh, the then Carnival Queen said uh, afterwards, my goodness, your makeup is very convincing. I said, it's not makeup, it's blood. And she said, oh. But uh, that did happen occasionally. Uh, on occasion, we had people who would spray too much water or other liquids on the crowd, and we, we'd tell them off, and they'd behave themselves better next time round. Um, we didn't get people leaping on and off floats too much. Um, we, we had, and I think it's fair to say, a lot of fun. We brought light and colour to Colchester, um, tied in, as I say, with the, the tattoo, and in the centre of Colchester, uh, the, the streets that we knew, and there was all this light, colour, music, fun, and it was really great. Yeah, I'm very sad that it is now longer gone, but we've moved on from that sort of thing. Uh, Colchester Carnival was a great highlight of everybody's year. I'm proud to have been involved with it and I think anybody who took part in it would be proud and pleased and will have many happy memories of Colchester Carnival whatever year. I think the first Carnival Queen in modern times would have been uh, the 1951 Carnival Queen for the uh, Festival of Britain and I'm not absolutely sure if there was a Carnival and thus a Carnival Queen in 52 but certainly 53 onwards there were carnival queens right up until the demise of the uh, carnival uh, must have been uh, very late 1990s. I'm not absolutely sure of the date because I was not then directly involved. Local girls, they weren't beauty queens as such, some of them were particularly attractive, but they were uh, girls who uh, were local or locally based and there was no swimsuit parade or anything like that ever and uh, many of them did a very fine job representing the town at other carnivals as well as presiding over our carnival and adding to the uh, gaiety of nations as they say. At the, uh, the town hall of course the procession would go past the, the mayor and uh, the chairman of the community fund. Uh, by that time of course many of the people on the floats would be getting a little bit uh, excited, sometimes overexcited. So their salute to the mayor and the chairman would take various forms, uh, all taken in good part by the crowds, and they really were crowds uh, by the town hall. And also, of course, the families of councillors and people like that would be up on the uh, balcony from the mayor's parlour and peering out of the windows. So it was quite fun going there. I have to say that uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier, of course the procession would come down, either down Molden Road or Butt Road, uh, Head Street, High Street, and work its way round, and then uh, latterly back up to Cavalry Barracks, whereas, as I mentioned earlier, in up to 63 we went into the Lower Castle Park. That was changed because of the size of the vehicles, having difficulty getting in and even more getting out. Uh, but uh, at one time, of course, they went the other way round the town, but with the one-way traffic, uh, they followed the, the one-way scheme. The carnival procession would be on the Saturday, and by the time I got involved, of course, it was an evening procession, and then uh, the following week was the tattoo. There'd be a dress rehearsal on the Tuesday evening, first public performance on the Wednesday evening. All the performers had to come down from their temporary accommodation at the barracks because many of them would come in from uh, other places and they'd be visiting foreign turns so they would march down through the town 
on the Wednesday evening uh, following the same route except that when they got down near the bottom end of High Street they'd turn down Maidenborough Street and go into the holding area by the Castle Park. The salute being taken this time by the Mayor and the garrison commander usually uh, at the Town Hall and the King Cole's Kittens would organise a collection at that procession and again on the Saturday afternoon before the matinee performance uh, another procession, another uh, street collection. So this boosted the Carnival Street collections quite considerably, latterly by as much as about a thousand pounds on the two processions. We had a large amount of support from various voluntary bodies and people helping with the marshalling because marshalling onto cavalry barracks was quite an art in itself because you had to make sure that nobody coming in actually blocked the way out either through the gate or latterly straight onto uh, the spur from Circular Road. The marshals would sort people into their particular sections and then usually some of the marshals would go round with the procession working with the police and the traffic wardens to keep the procession flowing and if there were any major hold-ups if for example a vehicle broke down they'd have to uh, arrange for the vehicle to be pushed to one side so the rest of the procession could come through and we had to rely upon again the good sense of the marshals to do this and we never had a major problem there and they were very good at getting people not only into the right place on the cavalry barracks square but also into the procession at the right place because as I mentioned earlier we tried to interfile a selection of bands, queens and different sorts of entries. The street collection was a very important part of the carnival procession because that was one of the two main objects, the other being general enjoyment. And uh, we had many collectors, uh, well over a hundred latterly, going out with buckets, collecting uh, coins and going to the back of the crowd because people at the back of the crowd didn't always necessarily dub up. Sometimes they'd fling a, a coin over. Uh, of course the people at the front would uh, have collections of, of copper so the collections weighed very heavily. The buckets, heavy duty decorators buckets would by the end of the procession be a bit cumbersome to carry around and on more than one occasion uh, one or two of the collectors would get uh, drain pipes or something similar so that the people in the upper windows watching could drop their coins down into the, the buckets and that was quite an operation in itself and for what he'd actually realised I think it was a totally disproportionate exercise but the people up there uh, would actually have caused a problem had they thrown coins from that distance at the procession so it was as well that they were given the opportunity to collect that way or by just dropping coins down to the, the people who were working in the back of the crowds. There were quite a lot of trophies. Uh, we inherited most of them, not all of them, some were newer ones given over years, but we inherited a lot of trophies from the pre-war carnivals. And these were magnificent trophies, um, chased silver were and that sort of thing. And uh, they were really something well worth winning. And people from carnival associations, from companies, individuals, were very pleased to receive these trophies. Um, and of course they had to give them back and we had to have them cleaned up and engraved for the following year. Uh, and they were certainly something well worth winning. I think the trophies went um, to the borough and are probably being kept uh, in the museum service uh, building in Rygate Road. Uh, I do also have a memory of the massed police pipe bands from Australia because I was collecting uh, at the procession then and they came level with me in High Street some, I don't know, 150 bandsmen, mainly pipers and they struck up just as they reached me. If you've ever been in the middle of 150 pipers you will know that the memory rings still.